We are now going to translate hyperbolas. What happens if we change the center point? And to do that, we're going to look at the, this page of facts again. Notice that, again, it depends on which one we're looking at, on which one's positive. So this is going side to side, and this one's going up or down. We still get our transverse axis. The length of it's the same. It's a, x equals h, y equals k. The length of the conjugate's still the same. Our center's at h, k, which we're used to. Our vertices just move on the x-axis a, or the y-axis a, depending on which one it is. The endpoint and the conjugate axis is moved the other way on the other variable. The foci still comes from c squared equals a squared plus b squared, but notice this is the big change. The asymptote changes because it has to include the center as part of the graph, so it's using the point-slope form to get it. So let's look at some examples. x plus 1 squared over 4 minus y minus 1 squared over 16 equals 1. This means we start by finding our center, and our center is at minus 1, 1. So there's our center. Our a squared is 4, so that means a is 2. And our b squared is 16, which means b is 4. So we're going to go over 2 from here, and these are going to be our vertices, because it comes from the positive one. And we're going to go up 4. And these aren't points, and we get a nice little rectangle formed around this. Our asymptotes are found at, at, at y minus 1 equals plus or minus 4 halves times x plus 1. So we, what we have is a slope of 2. And I'm just going to leave it in this form because I'm just going to go from here. So that says go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and to go down the same way. Down to, down to, down to, down to, down to. And just fill in all the dots that we need. I could do this with less dots. But there's my asymptote. There's my asymptote. And the last thing we need is our c squared, which is equal to 4 squared plus 16. And four, just 4 plus 16, rather. 2 squared plus 4 squared. So c squared is 20. So c is the square root of 20, which is 2 square roots of 5. But the square root of 20 is a little bit more than 4 and a little bit less than 5. So we'll put it there and there. And then all we have left to do is to draw in our parabola following the asymptote, hitting the vertice, and then following the asymptote. And now we've graphed a hyperbola. And we've got everything on here. Let's look at another example. y minus 1 squared over 4 minus x plus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. Again, our center is at minus 1, 1. Our b squared equals 4, so b is 2. And those are our vertices this time. And our a squared is 9, so a is 3, and these are not. So now here's our bounding box. Our asymptotes are found by doing b over a, so 2 thirds times x plus 1 with a plus or a minus is equal to y minus 1. Again, I'm going to leave it this way because all I have to do is go up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, down, 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 back the other way, and over the other way, and we get this nice asymptote here and this asymptote here. Our c squared is going to be equal to 4, four plus 9. Notice I'm just using what's already underneath, which is 13. So c is the square root of 13, which is between 3 and 4. So it's pretty close there. And then we just draw our line. So it follows the vertices out. And notice I'm doing up or down because the y, whoops, that's too close to the focus. There we go. The y comes first, so it's an up-down graph. And now we've graphed translated hyperbolas.